So these equations are actually quite useful. How would you modify what I just did to get the short run elasticity of demand for labor? How would you, how would you get the short run elasticity? Holding capital fixed. I'm not going to solve them, but what would the four equations you'd have to write down be? Exactly. So our equations are now going to become delta P equals SL delta W plus SK delta R. Okay. Delta y equals epsilon d delta p. That equation is going to be the same. Okay. Equation 3 is going to be delta L minus delta k equals sigma delta r minus delta w. And my last equation becomes delta y equals s. Oh, sorry, that's 0. Sorry. Delta L equals sigma delta r minus delta w. And my last equation is delta y equals SL delta L. And then you solve those equations. Okay. That would be the short run demand for labor. Okay. All right. Any questions that people that people have? Okay. Now in the two-factor case, how will, will labor and capital be complements or substitutes? That is equivalent to asking in the long run. This is delta R equals zero. Delta W goes up or delta W is positive, implies delta K greater than zero, delta K less than zero. Or in the short run, this is where delta K equals zero, delta W positive doesn't imply delta R greater than zero or delta R less than zero. Okay, those are two ways of asking the same question. Are they going to look like complements or substitutes? What does it depend on? What tends to make delta? Think about it. Think like an economy. Capital and labor are going to tend to move together. That is, as you raise the wage rate, there's going to be more capital in this industry or less capital in this industry. Yeah. Makes sense, right? You want to think about it, right? Why? Because think about it. The scale effect goes which way? So delta W is greater than zero implies delta P is greater than zero implies implies what? Delta Y is less than zero implies scale effect Less K, right? And L, <laughs> right? That is, the scale effect is always going to be pushing L and K back. That is, the, the scale effect tends to make these inputs complement. Okay? Now, it doesn't take a whole lot of genius to guess which way the substitution effect goes, right? It tends to make them what? Complements or substitutes? Not too hard. Substitutes. Flies, what is it? Delta W goes up, which implies delta, remember delta R zero, delta W rising, delta L, delta K over L, delta K over L is positive. So they're going to substitute toward capital. If I'm holding output constant, 
and I'm moving capital up relative to labor, which way must K be going? Well, K got to be going up because you got to produce the same amount of output. If you use less labor, you got to use more capital. You can't produce the same output with less of both. So delta K is positive for the substitution step. So yeah, it comes down exactly that. That is, is the elasticity of demand more important than the elasticity of substitution? That's going to determine whether a complement is a substitute. Anybody think of practical applications where we can think about that difference being important? Let me give you an example. Think about a subsidy to capital in the automobile industry, okay? And I subsidized capital in the automobile industry for the country as a whole, okay? Right. Is that going to lead to more labor in the industry or less labor in the industry? Let's say I had a closed economy where it was a closed economy where they produced and consumed all their cars. More likely or less likely that labor would rise or fall in that world than an open economy. Yeah, the less likely to be complements in that closed economy case because the scale effect is probably going to be smaller. There are fewer substitutes in the output market well, if I have a closed economy than an open economy. And therefore, the scale effect in the output market is going to tend to be smaller. What if the state of Illinois decided to subsidize automobile capital in the automobile industry? What do you think? Does that make the scale effect bigger or smaller? would tend to make the scale effect bigger in Illinois because it can now you can produce cars in Illinois rather than make them in Indiana right you have more substitution the demand for Illinois produced cars is much more elastic than the demand for US produced cars right because we can move across markets so the effect of like a capital subsidy on employment would be different depending on the level at which it's applied, because the mix of scale and substitution effects is likely to be different. 